Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Logitech G305 wireless gaming mouse, which is pretty much the pro gaming mouse, which has been so great as a wired mouse. And they've pretty much made that mouse completely wireless, which is awesome to see because up until I personally switched over to using the wireless G603, that was my favorite wired gaming mouse up until that point in time. And once I went wireless, I really just couldn't go back to the Pro, even though I personally preferred the shape of that mouse. So I really couldn't be happier that Logitech decided to take the Pro gaming mouse and pretty much make a wireless version of that with the same specs and performance that we that I've known pretty much for the past nine months on the G603, which is, by the way, still running at full battery life and it performs amazing for games. Um, I really can't tell the difference between that mouse and a wired mouse in terms of latency at the desktop or in games or anything like that. So the fact that they've made a smaller mouse, which is probably better, I would say, for myself because I play a lot of first-person shooters like Rainbow Six Siege, and the smaller size just seems to really help with aim a lot better in those types of titles. So really happy to see this mouse here from Logitech. It's going to be retailing for $60. If you're familiar with that pro gaming mouse, this is basically identical to that in terms of its size, but it is considerably smaller than the G603. So compared to the G, uh, the pro gaming mouse, I should say, as I said, height, width, depth are all the same. Height is 116 millimeters, while the width is 62 millimeters, and the depth on it is 38 millimeters. So it's 38 millimeters. So it's 38 millimeters long, and the weight on this guy is 99 grams with one battery installed on it, while the pro gaming mouse was 83 grams. So a fair bit lighter on the pro gaming mouse, but that's pretty much because you have to consider that that wasn't using a battery inside of it, while this has a single double A inside of here. Now the G603 that I'd been using up to now, which promised up to about 18 months of battery life was running on two double A's. So you're looking at half the battery life on here of about nine months if you're in the low polling rate, or if you want to switch over to the high mode that you can do in the Logitech software, you're looking at around anywhere from three to five months. But in my experience with my 603, with as much as I use it, it seems to be lost lasting longer than even than they had advertised. So I really don't feel like they're selling themselves short on it because as I had said, I've been using the 603 on high polling rates since I got it in the 2.4 gigahertz mode, and it's still not dropped a single bar of battery life. So that's just awesome to see. And they're pretty much doing the same thing here with the G305. And of course, this doesn't have RGB, just like they did on the 603. The programming mouse does have RGB, but that is going to eat up a lot of your battery life. So as a gamer that cares more about uh, gaming and battery life, not having this thing cut out in the middle of a gaming session, I am perfectly fine giving up RGB to have a kick-ass wireless mouse so it's not getting caught on my desk or anything like that. Taking a look at the mouse, you can see it's a pretty basic design. You've got your left and right mouse. You've also got a DPI switch, which is a bit, a little bit smaller than the uh, the Pro Gaming mouse because they've got to fit an LED behind it very likely. So they got a little bit of a smaller DPI switch, but otherwise, same exact functionality. This one works at 100 all the way up to 12,000 DPI, and you can go ahead and customize that in the software if you want to, and it'll store it right to the mouse and the LEDs on the mouse will actually change based on which of the different profiles that you set. You could set these custom you want to whatever number you want, the values you want. These are the ones that I personally happen to be using and you could switch between the high and low, the high and low power modes right inside of the software and that will adjust your polling rate. But if you want to get the best performance with the lowest latency possible, you want to be on the high power mode, which is what I choose to use. So that's a 1000 Hertz polling rate, just like you would see on pretty much every other wired um, gaming mouse out there right now in 2018. The scroll wheel on here is just okay. It's pretty much the same as the pro gaming mouse, really no difference here. It does have a fairly light middle click. So if you're wanting to use it in actual games, that's a good way to use it. But in terms of scrolling, it's not my favorite, honestly, at the desktop. And uh, compared to like the G603, I would personally prefer the scroll wheel on the 603, but pretty much everything else on here, I prefer on the G305 with a couple of maybe little tiny, so, okay, I lied. There's a little tiny, a few minor exceptions. So um, one would be that the back on here to get to the battery and the USB dongle actually slides off now. So you gotta go ahead and slide that off. Whereas on the 603, it just kind of popped off. It was held in place with magnets and it was a lot easier to do, but you've got your single AA battery in here, which you could swap out if you want to. It does come with this AA Duracell battery, but if you wanted, you could switch it over to a AA lithium battery, and that would actually knock about 9 grams off the weight. So if you wanted a little bit lighter of a mouse, you could actually do that by picking up your own 
lithium battery, but that's not included with this, just the AA Duracell battery here. And the USB dongle that comes with this guy that you can plug either into your PC or with the included range extender, you can actually store that right inside the mouse itself if you want to. The range extender is basically just like a five foot cable that you can run from the back of your PC to your desk. And that'll basically give you a little bit less travel dis distance between the mouse and the USB dongle itself. So if you're wanting to get the best performance possible, it's probably advisable to get that as close as you can to your mouse. If you're using something like a laptop, let's say, you'd probably be perfectly fine just taking the dongle and plugging it into the nearest USB port on the side of the laptop. We've also got your back and forward side buttons on here, nothing different from the Pro Gaming Mouse, and they are both pretty easy to access, really no complaints whatsoever about these guys going backwards and forward inside web pages, or if I needed to reach the uh, most forward button, if I wanted to set a macro or a hotkey or something like that in a game, totally doable. Um, the rear button, obviously, a little bit easier to get to if you wanted to use that, and I use that all the time to go back in browsers. Don't tend to use the forward button as much on mice, but... Uh, yeah, the back button is in a good place, not really awkward or anything to get to on here. Uh, looking at the bottom, basically the same design as the Pro Gaming Mouse. The only real difference here is that they have added a, another small Teflon foot at the rear of the mouse. And the reason that they have done this is so that if you are one, a person that would pick up the mouse, let's say, and you kind of get to the edge and you have to pick up the mouse and then bring it back over to the other side and then set it down, they did that because they said a lot of gamers would tend to land on the back side of the mouse before actually going flat again. So by putting that extra little Teflon foot at the back, it would kind of help smooth out the glide right there as you're resting it back into the flat level position. So yeah, nice little tweak that they did there as uh, maybe they got some feedback or something they noticed with pro gamers needing to have that on there. So really nothing to complain about with that. You've also got your power switch down here. So if you need to switch it on or off, you can go ahead and do so. Although I pretty much just tend to leave these on because they will actually switch off if you're if it notices that you're not using it for any period of time, it'll start to uh, kind of step down its power usage and then eventually completely shut off if you're not using it for any extended periods of time. My G603, for instance, I leave that on all the time. I never turn it off. And as I said previously, still on for full battery life here nine months later, and I leave it on all night long if my PC's on or off. Now, since this is on the smaller side in terms of gaming mice, it is going to be what I feel better for first-person shooters as I feel you can get a little bit better accuracy using a smaller mouse. So this is really definitely tuned to what I like to do. I, don't, I have about medium-sized hands, and I use a hybrid between a fingertip and a palm grip. I would say that this mouse is probably going to be best suited for those using a fingertip or a claw grip if you're using a a full-size palm grip, especially if you have larger hands, you may find it difficult to use a smaller gaming mouse like this, but if you're using average or smaller size hands, um, then it should be absolutely fine for you. And as I said, it really does favor the, the kind of the fingertip claw grips better, which is what I use a hybrid of. So it's definitely perfect pretty much for me. And, uh, but like I said, if you've got really gigantic, like catcher's mitt for catcher's mitt for hands, then it might be a touch on the smaller side for you. But if you're coming from the, the pro gaming mouse anyway, you'll be right at home using this. It's pretty much just getting rid of the wire. And that's always going to be a good thing. In my opinion, ever since these sensors have got so good, uh, gotten so good, I should say they're using the hero sensor here again, just like on the 603 and their other recent wireless mice, like the not G900 G903, all using the same hero sensor, which is really freaking good. It's on par with the Pixar 3366 in terms of its accuracy, but it is just really efficient in terms of power, which is why you can get that long battery life, but still not really have to sacrifice the performance. So it's a really, really uh, impressive thing that they've done uh, with the Hero sensors on these mice. And I really probably couldn't um, justify using a wireless mouse if, unless they had that type of sensor and, you know, the type of really fast and low latency that they are able to achieve on these mice. It, pretty much is the only reason that I'm willing to use a wireless mouse now because I used to be very much against using wireless peripherals because I want the lowest latency that I can but I really can't tell the difference in games going between something like this or a wired mouse so it's definitely a technological advance that I have welcomed with open arms ever since the G603 launched last year playing around in something like Rainbow Six Siege I have no issues whatsoever playing in competitive and being able to still pop headshots and things like that. It's just, it's absolutely perfect. And like I, I said a few times now, I really can't tell the difference with a wired mouse. So I have no issues whatsoever giving this sensor and the latency and everything that they've managed to do on these, my endorsement and for gaming and all of that. 
Um, it's really just going to depend on whether you want the smaller size here. Of course, they got the G603, which is selling for a little bit cheaper than this now, although it was more expensive at launch. It was selling for $70. So if you want a bigger size mouse, then you could go with the G603. It's, I still really like this mouse. It's probably going to get um, just moved over to my test setup and I'll stop using a wired mouse over there and I'll go to using the 305 pretty much full time here at my main setup but anytime I'm benchmarking or whatever or if I travel I'll probably bring the G603 along because it's still uh, one of my favorite gaming mice so I really can't say too much bad about either of these mice. It's really going to depend on whether you want the larger size or the smaller size, which is probably going to be better for gaming. I would give the edge to the 603 for battery life, of course. It's got the longer battery life because it holds two AA batteries. It's just, that's just math, bro. And uh, also the scroll wheel. I would give the edge to the scroll wheel here on the G603, but that's just really personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys, and go back to enjoying my G305. If you want links to where you can pick up the 305, I'll be sure to leave them down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're not already. And I will catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Ta-ra.